get started. So today we're going to get into logic, like logic as it pertains to persuading people and selling stuff. So that's kind of too big, isn't it? Okay, being being too picky here. So if you remember, if you were here last week, we went over emotion. So the way that anybody makes decisions is, come on, not working with me here. Okay, so any the way that anybody makes decisions is first through emotion, then through logic, right? So you want, you think about doing something because it appeals to you. You think that you'll feel better in the doing it. And it, it, technically it's not necessarily emotion. It could be a physical feeling. Like if you're hungry, then you go eat because then you feel like you will feel better as a result of eating. Or if you're lonely, then you go in and try to find somebody that, to, to hang out with, right? Because then it will make you feel like you're not lonely anymore, right? So everything that we do, we do because of feelings, whether that's physical feelings or emotion. And we got really deep last week into how to how to appeal to people's feelings and make them want to do the thing that you want them to do. And I highly recommend that you go and watch that lesson if you haven't seen it already. And then once people decide that they want to do something, well, then there's the logic that kicks in. It's like emotions are basically what's in it for me, right? What is the benefit? How does this benefit me? How am I going to feel better? Or how am I going to stop feeling bad if I do this thing? And then the logic is asking the question, will it work, right? So I, I think like somebody tells me, you know, take this pill and you'll feel better. And so I say, okay, that sounds good. I'm motivated, but do I believe that the pill is actually going to make me feel better? And so if you want to sell stuff or you really want to, you, to, to persuade anybody to do anything, you need to tick both of these boxes, right? You got to get the emotion to get the motivation in the first place. And then you have to prove that it's like, show them that it's going to work, convince them that it's going to work. And you want to do it in this order too, right? Emotion comes first because that's the motivation. <clears throat> Nobody cares about the logic if they don't first want to do the thing, right? So emotion first, then logic. So today we are going to go into the logic side and we're going to get really, really deep into that. So if you've had trouble with people believing your claims before, so if you say, if you tell somebody, I'm going to make you a million dollars, that's probably appealing to the person, to almost anybody, but a lot of people are not going to believe you. And so if you want people to believe you, then you have to address this logic part. And so a bad example of this, as I, uh, is, is you might have seen, I'd send an email about it yesterday, are those Nigerian scam emails, which I haven't seen one of those in a long time, but it used to be that you get these emails from people that claim to be a prince in some faraway country or like royalty or some noble family in, in Nigeria or something. And they'd say, um, if you, like, I have this giant fortune and if you will help me get my giant fortune, then I'll get you, I'll give you a piece of it. And then they would eventually ask you for money and say, oh, well, I need $2,000 to hire a lawyer in order to get my fortune. So just give me the $2,000 and then I'm going to give you $10 million, basically. So this is a good example of appealing to emotion, right? Because you want the $10 million. Like everybody wants the $10 million. They got the emotion part down, but they don't do such a good job with the logic part, right? Because it's very difficult to believe that they're actually going to give you that money. You probably, um, I, I mean, some some people must have fallen for it because otherwise they wouldn't have kept doing it over and over again. But uh, for the most part, they their logic was lacking because it's a scam, right? I mean, it's not a real offer. If you have a real offer, if you have something good, something of value to offer, then the logic part is going to come much easier to you. If you are trying to scam people, then this part's going to be difficult. So I recommend, you know, find something valuable to do and don't try to scam people, which isn't that difficult, by the way, right? I mean, learning this stuff, you are learning a valuable skill. 
uh, that you can that you can sell to businesses or you can learn. There are a lot of valuable skills out there that you can learn and that you can sell and that you can um, you can use this framework to deliver something valuable. So you're not delivering something that's that's a scam or something that's poor quality. OK, so um, does that make sense so far? Give me a give me one in the chat if that makes sense. Cool, thank you. Um, okay, so in order under this logic, under this this question of will it work, there's basically four things that people need to believe in. First one is you, right? They have to believe that you are the real deal. So if if you're going to say to a business owner, for example, that, hey, I'm going to come in and do marketing for your business and get you a bunch of a bunch of sales and a bunch of customers. Well, that's very emotionally appealing, like the business owner probably wants that. But why you got to give them a reason to believe in you. Why should this business owner believe in you? Once you get the person to believe in you, then you need to, and this could be your company, by the way, or your company, because sometimes you are the face of the company. Sometimes the company is something else. So like if I'm trying to get you to buy Cheerios, let's say, then you don't need to believe in me. You need to believe in the Cheerios company, right? Because the company is just a faceless corporation. Whereas if I'm saying that I, me personally, am going to get you leads or I'm going to teach you how to do this thing, well, then I need to get you to believe in me specifically as opposed to the company. So that's the first one. You need them to believe in you or your company. The next thing you need to get them to believe in is your method. So what is your method for getting them the results that they want, right? What is, what's in it for them? Um, and, and what is your method for getting them that thing? So for some of these, this is pretty obvious. Like, for example, maybe I sell hamburgers and somebody's hungry. And so what they want is what's in it for them is that they eat a hamburger. It tastes good. They don't feel hungry anymore. Right. And so I don't have to convince them of a method. They know what a hamburger is. They see a hamburger and they know, OK, yeah, that's going to going to make me feel good. I'm not going to be hungry anymore. Um, so in that case, it's not necessary. But if you're trying to sell something a little bit more sophisticated, like, for example, weight loss, you're trying to get somebody to pay you, maybe you're a personal trainer and you can help somebody lose weight. Well, they have to believe in the method that you're going to use in order to help them lose weight. So maybe you do the keto diet, maybe you do the high intensity interval training, maybe you do whatever, like, just eat bananas all day and that's the only thing you ever eat like whatever your method is you got to get them to believe that the method makes sense and that it works right so that's the second thing the third thing is your product right so once you've got them bought in on you you got them bought in on the method then you got to got to get them to believe that the product works so or the product is is helpful so Maybe you, you totally convince somebody that if they eat nothing but bananas, then they'll lose weight. And then you say, I'm going to train you to eat nothing but bananas. And that's the product, right? Well, you have to convince them that the product is worthwhile, that the product works, and that you're not going to just take their money and run and, and like never see them again. Um, so they have to believe that the product is good. And then the last one is one of the probably the most difficult one in some cases, they have to believe in themselves. And again, this isn't true for all cases, right? So if you sell somebody hamburger, like everybody knows that they can eat a hamburger. Nobody has any doubts about that. But if you sell somebody weight loss or you sell somebody a way to make money or you sell somebody a way to get dates or a way to be happier or a way to beat depression or beat their illness or you know anything like that, a lot of times people's self-belief gets in the way. So they could totally believe in you. They believe you're legit. They believe in your, your method. It makes sense. They believe that your product is a good product. The only problem is that they don't even, they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe in their capability to follow through. 
So we'll use my, my bananas example again. So I've convinced this person that if he eats nothing but bananas, then, then he's going to lose weight. And he's, he totally believes in my product. And that if he follows my system, then he will in fact lose weight, but he doesn't believe that he has the motivation and the willpower to follow through in following my product, right? If that's the case, he's still not going to buy because he doesn't, again, will it work is the key question here. Well, if he can't trust himself to do his part of the process, then no, it's not going to work, right? So we got to find some way to make this prospect believe in himself and his ability to fulfill on his part in order for it, for the, the process to work. So, um, cool. You guys with me so far? Give me a, a yes in the chat, if that makes sense. Cool, cool. So let me, okay. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to give you a whole bunch of examples of each of these. So er, examples of specifically ways or specific strategies that you can do to get people to believe in, in you and your product and your, your, or your method and your product and themselves. So, um, Oh, and by the way, if you think of, I'm going to give you examples for each of these. If you think of if any more examples of your own, then please let me know, like, like write them in the chat. I want this to be interactive. So first thing would be a, to show them your results. So for example, if you have a weight loss offer, then you could show the picture of you in the past when you were 50 pounds heavier and the picture of you now. That's the type of proof. And by the way, none of this, none of these proofs that I'm going to give you are 100% perfect, right? There's always somebody that can argue with you and say, oh, that, you know, that picture was photoshopped or, you know, something or uh, it, like anything, anything here can be faked. So none of these are 100% foolproof, but the more of these that you can stack up, the more people are inclined to believe you because even if you can technically fake it, it's difficult. So the first thing is, is your results, right? Next thing is your education. So you say, I have a PhD in molecular biology, if you're trying to sell something that's like science related. If, and again, all of these things have to be related. So if you're selling a, an offer on how to, or like, let's say that you're selling, you're selling shovels, and you show them your before and after pictures of how you lost weight, that it's, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's not relevant to a shovel, right? Where and the same thing, like if you say that I have a, a, a master's degree in physics and I, and I can teach you how to lose weight again, it's, it's irrelevant. Nobody cares about your degree if it's not relevant to the thing that they can help you with. Um, so credentials, Right. So that could be like I worked as is head of sales at Google um, or or what else? Like I have top security clearance, top secret security clearance from the U.S. government, that kind of thing. Uh, and all of these things, you like you prove the things that you say, it, it makes it a little bit stronger. So instead of just saying that you have a degree from Harvard, you actually show the Harvard degree, like you show a picture of it. And again, like it's not perfect. Somebody can Photoshop a Harvard degree if they want to, but having the picture of it is still better proof than not having it. Um, and it's up to you too to figure out like what are the important things. To be honest, for most cases, your education probably doesn't matter very much. Your credentials probably don't matter that much. So it depends on the case. Anyway, so another thing is awards, which actually, if you might have noticed, I... If I, okay, I unblur my background, you can see to my left here, I have some awards that I got for making a bunch of sales with, uh, with ads. Um, and so I keep them like within my screen there because it gives me credibility. And, and this one is, is pretty, well, <laughs> this one could be faked, right? I could have created those for myself. Um, but you know, at least the things are real. You can tell that because they're in the video. Anyway, so th that's the idea there. And then your your story is another one. 
right? You tell the story, not, not just show your before and after pictures, but show the story of everything that you did in order to get the result that you say that you, that you have. Your it, showing integrity is a big one. Like you want, that, that's part of what people need to believe about you. They need to believe that you have integrity. And so one way that you can show that is by helping people in a way that is not in your best interest. So for example, you're talking to somebody and they tell you about their situation and you're like, you could try to sell them your product, but you tell them, well, actually based on your situation, I think you should do this thing instead and, and steer them away from your product because you legitimately believe that that's what's best for them, right? People notice when you do that kind of thing. And even if they don't buy from you now, they will be, you will have proven your integrity and so they'll be more likely to buy from you in the future and more likely to recommend you to other people. Experience is another one, right? You ever hear somebody say, I have 35 years of experience in this field, right? Well, if you got a lot of experience, then people think, oh, well, he's been working 35 years as an auto mechanic. He's probably pretty good as an auto mechanic, right? So... Um, and again, this depends on the context. Sometimes people are going to value experience. Sometimes people won't. And sometimes you're marketing to a broad group of people where some people will, will be more compelled by your story. Some people will be more compelled by your experience. Some people will be more compelled by your results. So if you have all three, then you're, that's the best case scenario because you're, you're speaking to all three of those audiences. And then associations, right? So I was the the head coach for Tony Robbins, for example. Well, if somebody knows who Tony Robbins is and respects Tony Robbins, then the fact that you were his head coach, well, that, that says a lot about you. Like you must be pretty darn good if you were his head coach. You're associating with someone or something that they already have a, a positive impression about specific to your field. Again, like if you're if you're selling hamburgers and you say, I was, you know, I was Tony Robbins head coach and now I'm selling hamburgers, like that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> it's not relevant. Another one, a really, really big one, probably the biggest one, I'll even bold it, is confidence. This is huge. If you can, if you can show that you can talk about something confidently, it makes people believe you, right? So Here's an example. Like if you go, let's say you go to the mechanic and you have your cars overheating and the mechanic takes a look and he comes in and says, okay, well, you got a big hole in your radiator. And so it's leaking fluid and that's why your car is overheating. So I can get it fixed in about two hours. It's going to be 600 bucks. What would you like to do? So think about, okay, that's mechanic number one. Then you have mechanic number two who says, um, okay, well, I, I look at your car and I think it might be something with the radiator. So if you'll just like give me 600 bucks, then I'll, I'll replace the radiator. And, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully that'll solve the problem. Which mechanic one or two are you going to be more likely to give your money to? Probably number one, purely just on the confidence. So that's a big one. And then finally, is your motivation for something, right? And again, this isn't always the case because if you say, hey, I'm, you know, I'll sell you this, this course for a thousand bucks and somebody buys it, well, like the, your motivation is obvious. You want the money. Um, Whereas if you're going to do something where your motivation is not obvious, then people get suspicious. So for example, for this, this training thing that I'm doing right here, I'm doing it for free. And so probably people th see that. And if I say, hey, I'm going to show you how to do digital marketing and I'm not going to charge you anything. People are like, well, that's weird. Why would he do that? What's his motivation? And so I kind of have to explain that. I have to say, well, you know, it might sound weird that I'm willing to do this for free, especially considering these are skills that I've paid literally tens of thousands of dollars to learn. 
But the reason for it is that I'm building my reputation and that it's helpful for me just to ingrain what I learn is to teach it. It's just part of my learning style. And so people think, oh, okay, well, that makes sense, right? Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, I guess you guys can be the judge of that, but like you got to you got to give some reason for why you're in it because otherwise people think what's the catch so i i saw something recently on youtube where some like there was some youtuber that went up and it pulled up to a fast food restaurant like a mcdonald's or something and offered the guy that was working there a, like a hundred thousand dollars to i think it was a hundred thousand dollars to quit his job and literally held out the stack of cash $100,000 out the window and said, hey, if you quit your job right now, I'll give you this $100,000. And the guy said, no, he said, like, no, I, and he, he said, like, I can't, um, you know, I can't leave during my shift because there are people depending on me or something like that. And a lot of people reacted to that and said, wow, this guy, like this fast food worker is such a good guy. He's, he has so much integrity because he's, you know, he's not willing to leave his job even for this large amount of money. And I thought maybe, but I, I think a more likely explanation is that he didn't believe that the offer was real, right? Because it's very unusual for somebody to come to a drive through window and offer the person $100,000 for nothing, right? So the question there is, is the motivation. Why? are you offering me this $100,000? It doesn't make sense. So I don't think it's real, right? So either it's just a trick or like this is fake money or, or something. That's like, I would imagine that was what was going through the guy's head and he made an excuse for why he wouldn't take the money, right? So that's, you gotta, if you're gonna give something for free, you gotta explain your motivation Unless it's obvious, right? Um, it, it, you know, if you're selling something, then it's obvious. If you're like, hey, you buy this thing and it costs a hundred bucks, well, the, the motivation's obvious. You want the hundred bucks. But if it's free, then you gotta explain why it's free. Why what is your motivation in giving that thing for free? If you went over that if you go back to that that lesson to, that we did towards the very beginning where I showed you how to get leads we offered something to someone for free in return for their contact information. And so that's one where we might want to explain a little bit because people might not understand that their contact information is itself valuable to us. Okay, cool. So this is everything, well, these are, this is not exhaustive. There's probably other things that you could think of that would prove you or your company. So you can, um, and if you got more ideas, I'm happy to have, happy to hear them in the chat. And if you have ideas of like examples of these too, like I just gave that example of that YouTuber guy that gave $100,000 to the fast food worker, right? If you have other examples, let me know. Cause I want, you know, I want to make this engaging if possible. Okay, so next part is your method. So, People, once you get people to believe in you, people need to believe in the method that you use to satisfy them. So again, this is not, sometimes this is obvious, right? So if you sell coffee and what people want is to have more energy, well, everybody already knows that coffee contains caffeine and caffeine gives people energy. So you don't have to explain the method, like people already know. But in other cases, especially when you have like an expert business, you have to explain the method and get people to believe in the method. So I can use my example for this one. I run YouTube ads for companies. Well, in order for people to want to do business with me, they first have to believe that YouTube ads are a good method for them to get leads and sales into their business. So how do you sell people on your method or how do you prove your method? So the first way is logical explanation. So how does the method work? If you just say, oh, it works, believe me, that's not much good. But if you say it works because, and for like I can give my example with the YouTube ads, 
So I can say YouTube ads work really well because YouTube is owned by Google and Google knows people's intent. That is, Google knows what people are searching for because they have Google search. They know what videos people are watching because they own YouTube. They know what emails people are getting because they own Gmail. They know what websites people are visiting because they own Google Analytics, which is on more than half of web pages in the country. So uh, in the world, I think, actually. So like that's why you can get your ads using the YouTube platform in front of the very perfectly targeted people that are most likely to buy from you. So you see how that's a logical explanation. And the goal here is to get people nodding their head and thinking, okay, yes, that makes sense. So that's like, that's the biggest one that I lean on is logical explanation. And that, but there's more that you can do to, to prove it even further. So you can put, you can have like expert quotes. So for example, when I sell courses, Sometimes I quote Warren Buffett, who said that he said that like the greatest investment that you can make is in your own skills, like in your own marketable skills. And I'm, I'm butchering that quote slightly, but that's the, the general gist of what he said. And so anybody that believes that Warren Buffett knows something about making money and might want to listen to Warren Buffett is going to see that and say, OK, well, yeah, maybe I should invest in this thing. Right. And actually, that's that was a bad example because I'm talking about the method, but you can have expert quotes about the method. So let's say that you have you sell the banana diet training and your method is the banana diet. And so you find some expert fam like famous doctor that says that the banana diet is the best diet in the world. So if you get like Dr. Oz to say the banana diet is the greatest diet ever. And people consider him an expert in your audience specifically considers him an expert, then they're more likely to believe in your method because some expert believes in it also. So um, cool. So that's expert quotes and then studies, right? Like scientific studies. If you can show that like the, these people at the university of wherever proved that bananas have this this secret compound that like burns fat faster than anything else in the world, then that like that bolsters your claim. And you can use that along with your logical explanation, by the way, you can use all these together. So you have your logical explanation. You can say bananas have this compound called ABC. That is the fastest fat burning compound in the world. And even a study that just came out from the University of wherever found that people that, that took this compound lost weight at three times the rate of people who didn't, right? So you're, you're combining your logical explanation and your studies. Um, and what I, I should say, like scientific studies or academic studies, let's say, right? Because sometimes you can use psychology studies. Sometimes you can use finance studies. Studies show that that two thirds of business owners are feeling like are, are expecting the economy to go down. Or I guess that'd be a survey, but like studies show that that doing X method in your business will increase your productivity by 25%. Right. So you can study more than just science, but academic studies in general. And then Expert surveys, right? This is a big one too. It's like, have you ever heard that? I think it was Oral B or it was one of those one of those toothpaste companies said that, or maybe it was Crest. It was like like two out of three dentists recommend this thing, this Crest or whatever it was. And so, yeah, well, people think, okay, well, if the dentists recommend it and the dentists are the experts about toothpaste, then surely that's the case. Or you've probably heard that like 97% of scientists say that that um, man-made global warming is a, a giant crisis that's threatening the planet, um, which again, it's like, okay, well, if 97% of scientists believe that, then it's probably true. Which, by the way, that if you actually look into the the source of that that claim, it's totally a lie. 
Um, <laughs> but even but but you're saying that you're making the claim and it sounds true. It's like, oh, well, I don't want to be on the opposite side as 97 percent of scientists. That would make me a dummy. So that that works. Right. That's that's proof in the minds of a lot of people. And then stories are also good for your method, right? You talk about it in your story, if it incorporates your method is proving you, but it's also proving your method at the same time, right? You're showing the story about how you ate nothing but bananas and now you're super skinny and everything's perfect. Well, like that story is showing uh, the method working and it doesn't have, even have to be your story, right? It could be somebody else's story. So Johnny over here tried the banana diet and he lost a hundred pounds. And then let's see, we have statistics. Statistics are a good one. Like, and, and you know, that 97% of scientists believe that's kind of a statistic. Uh, although that's, that's more specific to a survey. But if you say that that like fifty seven percent of business owners don't know it don't know the first thing about digital marketing, or maybe make that more specific like ninety seven or fifty seven percent of business owners have never run an online ad before. If you can find that somewhere, and there's a lot of places that collect these statistics and you can use them as your own. You can even cite the sources too, which is, is helpful, right? So people think, oh, well, you just made up that statistic. But if you actually have the source of the agency or the, the body that created that statistic, if it's not coming from you, it's coming from somewhere else, then that gives it a little bit more credibility. <clears throat> and then we have news too, like news articles. And you see you see this quite a lot with financial stuff, like um, the Federal Reserve just raised interest rates for the fourth time in the last six months. Therefore, blah, 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 whatever you're trying to prove, right? And then you can have, when you say that, like have a screenshot of the news article that says that the Federal Reserve just raised interest rates for the fourth time, and then people are more likely to believe you. So that's like, that's what I got for the method. So um, give me a, give me a two in the chat, if that all makes sense to you. And if you have anything else that I missed, let me know that in the chat too. Cause again, these are not exhaustive. These are the things that I could think of in the like 20 minutes that it took to, to think of this. Cool. Next one is your product, right? So once the person believes in you or your company, they believe in your method. Well, if they want, if you want them to buy a product, then they have to believe in the product itself. The method is not quite enough. As we said about the, the banana diet, like people can believe in the banana diet, but if you are doing a banana diet coaching program, they have also have to believe that your coaching program is the key to helping them implement that banana diet so they get their goal. Right, so your product, uh, we have, for this one, we have testimonials. This is probably the first thing that people think of when they think of proof for a product. You have this screenshot of this person that says, hey, I tried Chris's product and now I'm a billionaire and have six pack abs and my life is wonderful and this is my new Ferrari. Right. Like that's a, a testimonial. And, and you, there's a whole science to like what testimonials are the most helpful. Um, and they like if they're more believable, it's helpful because you can fake testimonials like almost anything on this list you can fake. So the more like difficult to fake it is, the better. What I like to use for testimonials personally is comments that are unsolicited. So somebody leaves a leaves a note in my Facebook group says, Hey, I just, I just got a, a new client. Right. And then I'll like screenshot that I'll, like black out the person's last name to maintain their privacy and say, so this John just got a new client or, you know, whatever, whatever result they got. If somebody sends me an email saying, Hey, I just got, I just got a job offer for 
eighty thousand dollars, I'm wondering if I should like try to negotiate it higher or I should just accept it. Right. It's actually a question. It's not even a testimonial. But the fact that I've got it in and it's natural too, right? It doesn't seem like it's something that was written specifically for the purpose of making my program look good. You might have noticed that with like Amazon reviews. Occasionally you'll be reading Amazon reviews and you'll see reviews that, that you think nobody would have actually written this. This is just like the business owner himself leaving a fake review to make people think that it's real because it just doesn't seem natural. Like it doesn't seem like something and a real person would have actually written. So I'm getting a little off in the weeds on that, but testimonials, especially if you do them well, are good uh, proof of your product specifically. Related to that are case studies. Case studies are like testimonials, but they're more in depth. They're like you, you interview one of your prior students, for example, and this is like for a coaching course or if you're a personal trainer or something. And you have them tell their story and they say, well, yeah, I was I was 100 pounds overweight and I had no idea what to do. I tried all the diets and nothing worked and blah, 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 blah. And then I found Chris and then he introduced me to the banana diet. And then I tried I was skeptical at first, but then I started eating bananas and then I magically lost 100 pounds in 30 seconds. And, and now look how great I look. Right, that's a case study. It's and and maybe I'm even interviewing the person and asking questions. I'd be like, oh, okay. So like, how long did you do the banana diet? How many bananas per day did you eat? Et cetera, et cetera. What would you What would you say to anybody that's considering my banana diet program? I don't know how I came up with that banana diet example. I just <laughs> off the top of my head. So that's case studies. Next thing you can do is a guarantee. So a guarantee isn't only to like it, it serves two functions right the kind of the obvious one is hey if you take my program and you don't get results then i'll refund all your money well the first thing that does is kind of puts the person's mind at ease it's like okay i don't have to worry too much that this program this product is bad because if it is bad then i can just return it and and you know no harm done so that's kind of the first thing. But the second thing that's a little bit more implicit is that if, let's say, I offer you something with a guarantee and you're going to think, OK, well, this guy would not give this guarantee unless he was confident that the program worked. So, for example, my YouTube ads mastery program, I... I just started um, offering a guarantee that is not only you get your money back, but if it like if it doesn't work for you, you get your entire money back. Plus, I will buy you a one hundred dollar Amazon gift card just to say sorry for wasting your time. So basically, if anybody does the guarantee, then I don't just break even. I'm actually losing one hundred dollars. Right. So people see that and say, hmm. This guy is literally risking losing money on this deal if it doesn't work. So he must be really, really confident that it works. So in an indirect way, your guarantee is a type of proof that your product is going to work. Another thing that's related to that is performance-based performance payment, right? And this is something that if you want to if you want to offer marketing services, this is a really, really good way to start out. So if people don't believe that your product is any good, they don't believe that you can get customers into their business, you tell them you don't, you pay a percentage of, like, I, I don't charge you anything up front. You only pay when you make money. So when I get you a sale, then you pay me 10% of the sale. Right. Or I'll get you leads and I'll charge you $50 per lead. Right. So they don't have to pay anything until they have their lead in hand or until they've gotten their sale. So what that shows is that you're confident that your work is going to get the, the desired result, because if it doesn't, then you've just done all that work and get paid nothing. Right. So it shows how confident you are in the thing that you are offering. And so that's a really good way to start out when you don't really have stuff like testimonials and case studies.
And then we also have demonstration. So this is kind of cool if you can demonstrate your product working. So you might think of like those those Billy Mays commercials where I'm trying to think of an example, like um, or, or they do like with paper towels. They have a commercial where you have the the other brand paper towel and it swipes over the stained countertop and it leaves half of the stain there. And then the Bounty brand or whatever, and it swipes over the same stained countertop and leaves it completely clean, right? That's a demonstration that of what the product can do. Or like when I was uh, in college, I sold Cutco knives for a little while, which were a, like a fancy expensive knife. And one of the demonstrations that you would do is you would get the person to go and grab like their best knife from the kitchen and you take out a piece of leather and tell the person to cut through the piece of leather with their knife and generally it would take a little while you know it'd take them like 30 seconds and going back and forth a bunch in order to get through the piece of le leather and then you'd give them your cutco knife and say hey take my knife and now try to cut through this thing and they'd cut through it and it would go like like one or two swipes and it would already be cut through and so that's a demonstration. You're showing the person, and, and that really is like the the probably the most solid proof you're ever going to get. That's <laughs> that's really good proof that this is a, a superior product. Although actually, what they don't really tell you, and what I didn't even know at the time, I've kind of figured this out later, is it a sharp knife, even like a crappy knife, if it has just been sharpened will outperform will outperform just about anybody's favorite kitchen knife that they've been using for years because most people are not like sharpening their knife every day but anyway so uh, like a demonstration really really powerful if you can do that another one is endorsements so if you can get some celebrity to say that um that like let's say i got jillian michaels to say that chris's banana diet program is the greatest diet program in the history of the world well, it's, I'm, I'm getting, this is similar to the expert quote, right? Except where the expert quote is talking about your method, the endorsement is talking specifically about your product. So the person that is trusted in, for, in that particular domain is saying that they believe in your product. You see that with books a lot. Like when you look at, look at almost any book in the bookstore, and you see like quotes on the back of famous people saying how great this book is or how great this author is. That's what they're doing. And then we have price. This is one that a lot of people don't think of, but this is actually a pretty big deal. So to it, price communicates a lot about the quality of the product. So if I was to say, Let's say that I had a, a car company and I would, I said, we have this brand new, I'll sell you this brand new car. It's uh, like, it's brand new convertible sports car and it's $5,000. Never been driven before, straight off the lot, year 2024, brand new, and it's $5,000. Well, what are you going to think? You're probably going to think, okay, what the heck is wrong with this car? If it's five thousand dollars, it must be a really, really piece of crap car if it's that cheap, right? Because the the price is coming in below expectation. Or you know, I see this one a lot. Like people say, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to be a millionaire," and it's just ninety seven dollars. And it's like, well, it, well, it it depends too on the medium, right? So if it's like buy my my like book and to teach you to be a millionaire, and it's going to cost $97. It's like, okay, well, that kind of makes sense, because it's a book. It takes the person zero effort to send out a new book. But if I see, like, a personal coaching program, let's say, where I'm working one-on-one -on -one with you for the next eight weeks, and it's going to be $500, well, that's suspicious. Like if somebody who really knows how to make a million dollars is going to spend that much of his personal time and only charge 500 bucks, it's like, that's, that's weird. Something's crazy is going on there. And so, I mean, that kind of goes back to this motivation thing too, right? Like if you're trying to give away something for free, then 
people have to know that you're getting something out of the deal too. So your price should either be high enough to get people to believe in the quality of your product, or if it's strangely low, you need to give a good explanation as to why it's so low. And then finally is like limits. Uh, I should say like purchase limits. So if you ever see something that says like limit two per household, why did they say that? Do they really do they really care? Are, are they going to be super unhappy if some household buys three of their product? No, of course they're not. What they know is that nobody's going to buy, like hardly anybody's going to buy three, right? But what they're doing is they're sub communicating that, hey, this product is in so much demand, everybody wants it, so we have to limit the amount that we're gonna sell. That's what they're doing there. So you're, you're essentially using people's logic to think that your product must be good because if it wasn't super good, then you wouldn't have to limit the amount. Okay, so that's it for product. Any, like, Give me a, a three in the chat if that makes sense. And give me, if you have any questions, give me questions if, or if you have like other examples or other things I should have included, then, then put that as well. Because again, this is not an exhaustive list. There's probably other things that I've left out here. Cool. So next one finally is getting people to believe in themselves, which oftentimes is the most difficult of the four. And oftentimes is the most overlooked. You're like, like, why won't this people buy from me? Like I, they, I've given so many, so much proof in myself and my method and my product, but people still won't buy from me. What's going on? Well, it could be that people don't believe in themselves, right? So if I have somebody convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt that, that doing the banana diet is going to help them to lose 100 pounds, which is the thing that they've always dreamed of and that they want most of anything in life. But and they believe that I'm the coach, that I'm the perfect person to teach them and, and like lead them through the banana diet and they still won't buy my thing. Well, it could be because they don't believe in their own ability to follow through. They don't believe that they have the motivation, right? Maybe they've tried something similar in the past and they the product is like the, the coaching program was great. The coach was great. Everything was perfect. Everybody else was getting results, but for some reason they just couldn't stick to it and they were procrastinating or whatever. And so they're just worried that the same thing is going to happen again. They don't believe in themselves. Well, they're not going to invest in your program because it's not going to work if they can't make themselves follow through. So there's a few ways to deal with this. The most common one is, Show that it's easy, right? And so you give it like a logical explanation for that. So, um, and this is something that, that marketers are notorious for is making everything seem easier than it actually is. And a big part of it is because of people's self-belief. The truth is that at least as far as I found that the majority of people don't really believe in themselves. They don't really think very highly of themselves. And, you know, I notice this a lot, like people will say, I'm going to do this thing tomorrow, and then they don't do it. And so they, what they're doing essentially is they've, they've trained themselves to see themselves as a liar. Like you said that you do this thing tomorrow, then you didn't do it. Oh, I didn't feel like it. Well, okay, but you were, you're pushing that into your subconscious that you are not a person to be trusted. So how are you ever going to have any trust in yourself? if you don't do the things that you say that you're gonna do. But that's how most people go through the world and most people have very, very little faith in themselves for that reason. So what you can do to combat that problem is show that it's easy, right? Like if this, if this banana diet is the easiest thing in the world, then even you that's totally unreliable and breaks all of your commitments, even you can do it, right? That's the idea. It's so easy, even a caveman can do it. <laughs> to borrow from the guide code commercial, which is, I mean, that one was kind of a joke, but you, the more that you can show that it's easy, um, the, the more likely people are to buy in and to get over that, that hurdle of believing themselves. So the same thing, same idea is like case studies from 
from people in similar or lower situations, let's say. So if I show a case study of this is John who made a million dollars following my program, and then if, a lot of people are going to look at that and say, okay, yeah, well, well, John, you know, pr probably he had rich parents and he lives in a big city and he's, he has like a super high IQ and blah, blah, blah. They're going to make up this story about why John is up here and little old me, I'm down here. So of course it's going to work for John, but that doesn't mean it's going to work for me. Right. So what you do is you show that like, um, that like, yeah. So after you tell the story about John and then you say like, here is, is Pedro who also succeeded with my program. And Pedro came like, came into this country at like two years ago, barely spoke English and, and worked as a janitor and lived in a house with six other people, didn't have a penny to his name. And yet he did this program and he succeeded. Well, people are going to see that and think, okay, well, if Pedro can do it, Pedro has started off in a much worse situation than me, but now he's a millionaire. Well, if Pedro could do it, that I could definitely do it, right? Or here's little Timmy, he was 10 years old and playing with Pokemon cards and, and we showed him this thing and now he learned to do X, Y, Z. And now he's got his own Pokemon card selling business and, and he's making lots of money. Right. Well, people say, well, if a 10 year old kid can do it, then I can do it. So that's the idea of people in, in lower situations or people in similar situations. So somebody hears like Pedro's story and says, well, hey, I just immigrated and I'm you know, I don't really speak English very well and I'm working in a low level job. So, you know, I'm I feel like I'm on the same level as Pedro. So if Pedro can do it, I can probably do it, too. Right. So. um yeah, so that helps a lot. And that's something to keep be aware of, too, when you have testimonials and case studies, is that sometimes they can work against you because people assume things about the people in the case studies. So if people, it could be that people were actually already into your product and they were thinking about doing it, and then you use it, you show this case study about John and John is this like super tall and handsome guy that has is super intelligent and has a degree from Harvard and blah 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 and like rich parents and and lives in New York City in Manhattan and like that's where he started and you start using him as your case study well the people that were already interested in your product well now they're th now they're second guessing themselves they're like whoa well I, I'm not like that I I don't have the things that John had so like, there's no way it's going to work for little old me. So that like, you, you can literally talk yourself out of a sale using these if you do them in a, a bad way. <laughs> so um, case studies. And then finally, the last one, probably the most difficult one is to build people's self-belief. And, and there's various ways to do this. One that I did, because uh, I had this program um, teaching people to be data analysts. And well, I still have it, um, but it, that was one that I found people's self-belief was a problem a lot. Like people just thought, oh, well, you need to be like super smart to do that. And you probably need to have a college degree and you need to be um, and, and and also like you have to. You have to be super motivated and like you have to go through all this stuff. And so what I did to kind of try to combat that was instead of like, instead of just, I mean, I did kind of like try to make it look easy. Um, and I showed like, I showed a whole bunch of, a bunch of like news articles saying that, that the, there was this data skills gap that like all the companies are complaining because they don't have enough people that have data skills. And so I found a bunch of news articles that said that. And, and so there's a, like a bunch of proof that I use, but for the on on this one for building self belief, I kind of got into the psychology of how to stay motivated. Because what I was running into was a lot of people just didn't have the motivation to follow through with anything. So it doesn't matter how much they believed that my program would work. They if they didn't believe that they had the capability of following through, then it didn't matter. So I had to build that belief in them. 
And so <clears throat> what I did was I went through this big presentation of here's how motivation works and here is what you can do to keep yourself motivated, right? So if people take that to heart, then it was, it was really good stuff, by the way. Like I, um, it's, it, it really, the stuff I, I was teaching, it really works. Like if you do it, it will keep you motivated much better than most people are because most people don't understand the mechanisms behind motivation. And maybe I'll get into that in a, a later lesson. But if people can, if I can get people to see that this time is going to be different because I'm going to show you how to stay motivated, right? And even if I like, in that case, I was showing them how before I ever sold them anything. Well, then I'm building their self-belief so that they can believe that they can follow the program and they can get results. So that's it for like for everything here. Um, if anybody's got any questions, let me know here. And then I'm going to give you a little homework assignment, which is watch my YouTube ads mastery video and note everything I do uh, to build belief, like logical proof. So I'm gonna, um, actually, let me, just a second, let me find that. Probably should have had that ready in advance, but I'll just be a second. Hey guys, in this training, I'm going to show you the method that I've used. Oh, that was not the right one. Okay, I think it's this one. If you're alive, if you have a pulse, probably someone is... Okay. Yeah, so this is the one. I'm going to share that with you here, give it to you in the Zoom chat also. So go through that, that video, it's only like 20 minutes long, and just look for all of these things that I do in that video in order to, to build the logic. And you know, if you want, if you want to do extra credit, look at look for the things I do to build emotion as well. But um, start with the logic because that's what we went over today. And then, if you want, that's the that's the the main homework. But if you want extra credit and for your business, come up with two proofs for each type. Right. So when I say that, I mean like two things that you can use to build belief in yourself, two things for your method, two things for your product, and two things for your customer, your prospective customer. And if you don't have a business and you still wanna do this, like this is really, really good practice. And I always recommend that don't just learn stuff and like forget about it. Because if you just go off and, and just like, don't do anything, then you're probably going to forget most, if not all of this. So like actually do this work because it's going to ingrain it in your brain much better than if you just listen to me talk about it. So um, yeah, so the, the main one is, is go take a look at that video and note everything that I'm doing. If you want to like write it down and, and even write it in the Facebook group, I have the Facebook group specifically so that you can share this kind of stuff, right? And we can give each other feedback. So um, do that and then for your business, or if you don't have a business of your own, then just do it for another business. You can do it for my business, you can do it for McDonald's, you can do it for a friend's business, doesn't matter. So just for any business, let's say a business instead of your business, just come up with two proofs in each category. So that's it for tonight. Thank you guys for joining me and I will see you same time, same place next week. Bye everybody.